We're at the Natural History Museum Garden. I'm Alan Jones and I'm going to talk to you about Earthworm Watch, which is an opportunity to learn about soils engineers. I'm Victoria Burton, I'm a researcher here at the Natural History Museum and I need your help to look at how humans affect earthworms by sampling them in different habitats. To get started with Earthworm Watch, you're going to need a few bits of kit. So we've got here your instruction booklet. You need also a trowel, some bottles of water, which you'll use to mix with the mustard for releasing your earthworms from the soil, some Tupperware containers for sorting through your samples, a large spade, a black bin liner for helping to sort through the soil, and finally, some uh, sachets of vinegar, which you use for testing the soil. So the next thing you need to do is try and find two areas you're going to uh, do your earthworm sampling. So you need two habitats for this. So to my left here we've got some meadow grassland and then behind me we've got a nice wooded area and we'll be able to compare and contrast these by sampling in both spots. So when you've found your patch of habitat you just need to tick off a few things on your habitat list here. So uh, work out whether you've got bare soil or whether you've got grass covering the area whether you're on a lawn or a flower bed, or if there's any fertiliser or mulch on that particular area. The first thing you're going to need to do is measure out your 20 centimetre hole. So for this you're going to need your trowel and your Earthworm Watch instruction sheet, which has got a 20 centimetre uh, gauge on it. So if you put this on your spot on the floor, dig in with the trowel, and mark out that square area. Once you've done that, you're ready to dig. Okay, so now you've dug your turf, you're ready to start sorting through your soil. So if you lay out your plastic sheet on the grass, you can put the turf on the plastic sheet. Now to help with this, you'll need one of these uh, Tupperware boxes. And it's just a case of simply going through the soil with your hands and seeing what you can find. You want to look for plant roots like these. This is the ideal habitat for earthworms. This is where they like to hide. So if you want to find them, that's where you want to be looking. So once you've searched thoroughly through all your soil and you're convinced there's no more earthworms left there, you've got them all in your tray, you're good to go. So you now need to mix up your mustard solution. So for this you'll need your 500 milliliter bottle of water and your mustard sachet that comes with the Earthworm Watch kit. So just simply tip the mustard powder into the, uh, into the bottle, give it a bit of a shake and you're ready to pour it into the soil. So we're going to time this for five minutes and the reason why we're adding mustard to the soil is to encourage deep living earthworms to reach the soil surface. Now the mustard encourages them to come to the surface but doesn't actually do them any harm. We're ready to start identifying the worms so I'll hand over to our resident worm expert Victoria. So now we've got our earthworms it's time to categorise them. Before you do that it's useful to get some clean water and just give them a little wash remove any soil from them. It'll be easy to see what colour they are. Once you've got your earthworms and given them a wash to see the features, you can separate them into the three different types. This is an adult earthworm. You can see the thickened area, the saddle, part way along the body. So this is an immature earthworm. And then within these groups you can break them down into the three different types of earthworm. This is a deep living earthworm, it's dark reddish brown in colour and very very long, greater than 15 centimetres. You can use the ruler on your uh, card to measure them. And this is a soil feeding earthworm, they're always pale in colour, yellow or greenish, bluish sometimes, blotchy but never red. Oh, this is a surface living earthworm. It's also red in colour, uh, but they never get as big as the deep dwelling earthworm, always under 15 centimetres. Fill in the chart on your sheet with the numbers you found. Now we've got to measure some properties in the soil, starting with moisture. Take a small piece of soil in your hand and squeeze it together. If it forms a ball, it's moist. If water runs out of it, it's wet. And if you can't make a ball at all, it's dry. 
Next it's the fizz test. We put vinegar on the soil to see if it's got calcium carbonate or chalk in it. Take a small piece of soil about the size of a 50 pence piece and pour a little bit of vinegar on top. Watch it for about a minute to see if there's any bubbles. Uh, if you can't see it, try putting it up to your ear and listening to the bubbles. This indicates that it's got uh, chalk or limestone in it. Earthworms are particularly fond of chalky soils. Next, we can look at determine the texture of the soil. This is important in how much nutrients it contains and also whether it's good for earthworms. Uh, you can use the flow chart on your car to determine the texture. Take a scoop of soil about the size of 50 pence piece and add a little water so it's moist. Roll it in your hand and see if you can make a ball. Next, go on to the next part of the flow chart and roll it in your hands to try and make a sausage shape. If you can't make a ball at all, it's a sandy soil. If you can make a sausage without it falling apart, go on to the next part of the flow chart. See if you can polish the sausage to a shine. If you can, it's a clay soil. If not, it's a loam, which is a perfect mixture of sand and clay particles, excellent for growing food. Once you've determined the texture of your soil, you can go on to measure the colour using your card. This tells us about the amount of carbon in the soil and also uh, any minerals like iron. Take a small piece of soil and compare it against the colours on the chart. And then choose the one that best matches it. This is in column A and row 6, so it's, we can write A6 on our sheet. When you've finished, put your earthworms back in the hole, avoiding areas that might have still mustard water in them and then put the soil back in the hole. We've completed our first survey, now it's time to move on to a different site to repeat the process and compare the two. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope you'll enjoy participating in Earthworm Watch. Before we go, Victoria's got one thing she'd like to say. Please, please upload your data, make the most of your hard work and help us find out how humans are affecting earthworms. And thank you for taking part. Thank you.